Okay, the next part of our lesson, um, we're just going to practice graphing a little bit. I do think you can graph these on the regular graphing calculator, but I do think Desmos is a little bit easier. So if you want to use Desmos rather than your graphing calculator, so either the app or you can go to desmos.com. It just graphs prettier than these old graphing calculators do. So feel free to use Desmos instead. Um, but we are going to look at how to actually do them by hand as well. So one thing to remember when you're looking at graphs of exponentials and logarithms is they do have those asymptotes that we talked about. So with log, um, log functions, we have that vertical asymptote. So y has to be greater than zero. Um, so that means we can't use the left part of our graph. You can shift these left to right, but if it's just a regular log, um, you do have that vertical asymptote there. So you cannot take the log of zero or a negative number. That comes again from having that vertical asymptote. So um, we have to be, I don't know why I wrote y, sorry. X needs to be greater than zero. Um, X needs to be greater than zero or you're going from zero to infinity. You can think of it that way as well. So just like any of our other functions that we've looked at in the past, you can shift them you can reflect them, you can stretch them. So you'll notice that it has a similar kind of format to those types of equations. So actually maybe I'll write that up here. You'd have f of x equals a times log base b of x minus h plus k. That's the general format. So we've used a, h, and k in our past types of equations. If you remember a in the front, this is going to be your vertical or horizontal stretch that's going to be making it either skinnier or wider. The h on the inside, this is your horizontal shift. But remember the horizontal shift is always tricky because the sign is backwards. So if it's a negative, it actually goes to the right. If it's a plus h, it actually goes to the left, it's backwards. So we want to always think of the opposite of that um, sign. And then k is going to be your vertical shift, but this one makes sense. So if it's a plus, it goes up. If it's a minus, it goes down. So it's just that horizontal we wanna be careful with. So having these horizontal and vertical shifts though will affect the domain. So if I shift it to the left, instead of having my domain be at zero, it might be over. So we'll see that in this next one. Because um, on this one, I don't have an A in the front. I don't have a K back here, but I do have an H. Remember, it's usually a minus H, where minus goes to the right. But if it's a plus, it's actually going to go to the left. So this is going to be a left shift one. Um, so instead of having our asymptote be right on the Y axis, we're actually shifting it left one. So that domain's changed a little bit. So we're now at negative one. And then if you remember to the beginning of our unit or this lesson, I told you you had these two points that you can use. We're gonna use these points to help us graph it by hand. So there's going to be a point at one zero and there would be a point at B1, but that's if I hadn't shifted it. So again, it would have been at one zero and there would have been a point at B comma one, but we need to shift. So if it had been at one zero and I shift it left one, it's now going to be at zero zero. So we have this shift here and it's going to go to zero zero. And before B comma one, our base is four. So it would have been over four up one, but I have that left shift. So I need to go left one. So now it's at three comma one. So that would have normally been four one, but we shifted it left one to three one. And then this will just skim along this asymptote. So asymptotes do, and then we're just gonna bend through and it just kind of flattens out. So I didn't do the prettiest job of doing that, but you guys get the idea. And then again, you can do it in the graphing calculator. <laughs> this next one's really ugly, so I'm not gonna take the time to do this one by hand. This one would have um, had a reflection though, so you can turn these upside down. So instead of going up like this, this one's gonna come down from that reflection. This one is going to be a stretch. It's going to make it 
taller and skinnier. Think of stretching that out. And then we do have a double number right here. So we're going to be making it more stretch. We're going to have a vertical stretch. And then because this number is out front here, if I factor this out, we would get x minus six on, or x minus three. Let's see if I can even factor today. This is going to give you a horizontal stretch and then also another reflection horizontally. And then we have now, because I took out that negative, it flipped this sign. This one is now going to be shifted right three. And then we're going to be going up three. So this one's a pretty ugly one to do by hand. Um, we're just going to, I'm going to show you how to do it in the graphing calculator. Again, you can use Desmos, um, or if you just have a graphing calculator, the log button is next to the number seven. This log button though is for a base 10. So on this one, we have a base five, so I can't actually use this log button. So to find the log button, go to your math menu and then go over, Let's see if I can even remember where it is. Okay, so it's in the math one, and then go down to this A right here. So it's six, seven, eight, nine, that would be like 10. And then this A is the log base. If I click enter on here, you'll see it gives me the two little squares. So I can type any base in here. So like on this, I could do a log base five. And then if I use the arrow key, I can go over to the inside. So that's where that is. Again, it's in the math menu, but then you have to scroll all the way down to that log base. So if we want to graph this one, clear that out. I'm going to do negative two in the front, go to math, go down to log base. And then we're going to do base five. And then on the inside, we have negative two X plus six. And then the plus three is outside of the parentheses. So go out of it and then do the plus three on the outside. And then we'll graph it. Oh, my window's all weird. Let me fix that window. Let's go negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. Okay. And you'll see it is going in a different direction. Um, and that's from those double reflections that we had. We had a vertical reflection and a horizontal reflection. The other thing I don't like about these graphing calculators is this doesn't stop right here. Um, I don't know why they don't continue that lineup because obviously they can do a vertical line because we have the axis right there. This should keep going. So if you do it on Desmos, this line won't stop. It'll keep extending like it should. So that's another reason why I prefer to use Desmos with logarithms, but this would be our graph right here. And you'll see we are going through zero one. Um, so that would be one of our points that we could mark on our paper. And then normally we would have had a point over here, but we reflected it. So this one is going through I think that's negative three. One, two, yeah. I think it's looking at negative three right there. And then um, our asymptote, because we do have that stretch, one, two, three is over a positive three. Or sorry, not stretch, that reflection. It flipped it. So this one was kind of a tricky one to do by hand. So it would just come down from that asymptote and then bend over like this and keep going. So again, I would use Desmos probably. Um, Desmos is going to be prettier to use. You can definitely use the graphing calculator if you don't want to use Desmos, but just remember that it doesn't stop. It keeps going along that asymptote there. Okay, and then it's kind of a long lesson today. We're going to look at solving some logarithms really quick. These are kind of easier ones for today, and then we'll look at some harder ones later on. But when we are solving log equations, um, we have something called the principle of exponential equality. It's kind of a stupid principle, or I shouldn't say stupid, but it's pretty self-evident. <laughs> it's saying if you have a base raised to an exponent equal to another base raised to another exponent, those exponents must be equal to each other. If the bases are the same and they're equal, then the exponents have to be the same. So it's just saying exponent one is equal to exponent two, which is kind of obvious, right? So kind of a silly principle, but you will be using that in this unit. So um, 
I have these kind of set up by different types of methods that you'll be using when solving these equations. We're gonna look at some log ones first, then we'll look at an exponential one, and you'll kind of see the similarities as we go. So we're going to use properties of exponents to solve. Usually when you're doing these types of equations, if you're starting with a log, you're probably going to want to go to exponential form to solve for x. Um, and so the reason for that um, is because getting it in exponential form might make it easier to solve. So remember to go back and forth. If I cover up the log, this looks like my base. The 8 and the x will just switch places. So if I switch this to exponential form, I get 2 to the power of x is equal to 8. And then from there, you just need to figure out, well, 2 to what power is going to give you 8? So I know 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 a third time equals 8. So I know 2 to the third power equals 8. So that means x is equal to 3. And so it's easier to think about that when it's an exponential form versus log form, because we don't really know how to do logs in our head, but I am better at doing exponentials in my head. On this one, x is inside the log, so to get it out, again, we want to go to exponential form. So 7 will be my base, but then 2 will become the power, and it will equal x. And that's going to be a lot easier because now it's just 7 squared. I can do that in my head really easy. 7 squared is 49, so 49 equals x. So again, switching it from log form to exponent form is going to help. And then on this one, this time x is the base and then three will become your exponent and it will equal 125. So again, you can probably do this in your head, but think what number cubed equals 125? That happens to be five. If you can't do it in your head though, you could always take the cube root to undo that and then the cube root of 125. And so you would get X equals five. But again, a lot of you could probably just do that in your head. Okay. This next set, um, we are going to use some different exponent properties here. These ones are gonna be a little bit trickier. Um, we'll get a little bit harder as we go. On these ones, we have 27 squared is equal to nine to the power of x plus one. Um, if you wanted, you could actually get 27 squared and have that number um, and then start working from there. But let me show you another trick that works really well. If you notice that these two numbers might have something in common, like 27 and nine, have some similarities, right? Um, you can do this little trick right here. I know that nine is the same as three cubed, or sorry, three squared, right? But then 27 is the same as three to the third. Three times three times three is 27. So if I switch these to the same base, I can use this principle of exponential equality that I was talking about. That if the bases are the same, they have to be the same number, then I can set their exponents equal. We don't want to forget that this had this little x plus 1 though, so we're going to keep that out there. We're just changing the 9 and the 27 to be in base 3s, because once these numbers are the same base, we can set their exponents equal to each other. So now we can use that principle. Essentially, we're just getting rid of the bases. We're just going to look at these exponents. So if I have just three over here, and then these are being multiplied, think of this as being two times x plus one, that's gonna be a lot easier to solve than having to worry with an exponential equation. So if I just distribute this two through, we're gonna get two x plus two. So if I minus the two over, I get one is equal to two x, and then divide by two. And so x is equal to one half. So that's how that principle of exponential equality comes into play, is that if you can notice that the two bases can be transformed into the same number base, um, it works really well because then you can drop the bases and just look at the exponents to solve, which makes it a lot easier. So um, you might have to be a little tricky sometimes if you don't remember the numbers, we'll look at some more, but it's a good little trick. Hey, on this one, we have a log here. Again, you'll notice most of the time when you start with a logarithm, you'll want to switch to exponential form. So I have this base four, 
but then two is going to become the exponent, and then this entire inside is what it's going to be equal to. But by doing that, this x initially was inside the logarithm function. By switching to exponential form, this x is now, long, is now no longer in the log, so I can actually start to isolate x. So if I just do four squared is 16, I can start getting x alone by adding two over and get 18 is equal to three x, divide by three, and 18 divided by three is six. And that would be your answer. So again, go from log form, move it to exponential form, and that will help you solve it. So that's a pretty common method for solving. Let's look at a few more and then we'll be done. Hey, whenever you see two bases that equal to each other, it's probably a good sign that you wanna try and do this little trick. So think, is there a way that I can write these to be the same base? So I know 81 can be written as nine squared. So I'm going to change this to be a nine squared, but then I still have that x plus six. So think of these as being times. We have a power to another power, so we need to multiply that two through. And then we can just keep this as a base nine. We don't even need to change the left side because now that these are both base nines, I can drop the bases and just look at those exponents. So I'm gonna have x minus three is equal to this exponent and let's just distribute it now. So I would get two times x and then two times six is 12. And then we'll just start solving for x. So let's minus the 12 over. So let those cancel and we get negative three minus 12 is negative 15. And then let's just do this all in the same step. Let's minus this x over here. So that cancels two x minus x is one x. So x just equals negative 15. So again, whenever you usually see these bases, try and see if you can get them to be the same base so that you can do that little trick of dropping the bases and just setting the exponents equal to solve. Okay, let's look at this one. Let me move this. So whenever you have a logarithm, chances are you'll probably wanna to go to exponential form. So I'm going to take this x, it stays the base, but then negative three becomes my exponent and the inside of the logarithm is what it's going to be equal to. So this one is using a negative exponent. So remember that when you have a negative exponent, you can rewrite it as one over x to the positive of that exponent. So I have one over x cubed is equal to one over 216. So when we write it in that format, it makes it a little bit easier because now we're really just saying what number cubed equals 216. We're thinking the denominator has to equal this denominator, right? So again, if you can do it in your head, cool. If not, you can always take the cube root of 216. But um, cube root of 216, remember your cube root is in the math and go down to number four. Cube root of 216 is six. So a lot of you probably could just do that in your head, but if not, you can always do that cube root function on your calculator. So six would be your answer. Okay, and then last one. Okay, this one's kind of a tricky one. See if you can do it without me giving it away yet. We have a number to an exponent equal to a number to an exponent. Looks a lot like these ones, right? But we have a fraction here. So whenever I see this type of format where I have an exponential equal to an exponential, again, I want to try and do this little trick because then I can get rid of the bases and look at just the exponents. So I wanna think, is there a way to write one over eight and four as the same base? So I want you guys to think about that for a second before I start giving it away. What could I maybe do to write one over eight and four the same? So think about that for a second. So I think, what do eight and four have in common? Well, four squared is 16, that's too big, right? So I can't turn eight into a base four, but is there a number that maybe four and eight can both be? Well, two, if I square it, two squared is four, and two, if I cube it, is eight, right? So I know two squared equals four, and two cubed equals eight. The only thing is, this eight is in the denominator. So what can I do to 
write 1 over 8, a fraction, into a base of 2. Well, we kind of just did that, right? If I have a negative exponent, that's the same as a fraction. So here's our little trick. Instead of 1 8, I'm going to write this as a base of 2 because I know 8 cubed is, or 2 cubed is 8. But because it's in a fraction format, I want it to be a negative 3 because that negative 3 is going to tell that we put the 8 in the denominator. So, oh, sorry, I hit my camera. So that's kind of our little trick there. We're changing 1 over 8 to 2 to the negative 3 using that little negative exponent rule. But we still have this 6 minus x out here. So we're going to keep that. And then 4, I'm going to write as 2 squared. And we have the 8 here. But now that they're both a base 2, I can do my little principle of exponential equality and look at just the exponents here. And then remember, these are a power to another power, so that's your product rule where we want to times these through. So if I times negative 3 through and FOIL it, negative 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. And then negative 3 times negative x will be a positive 3x. And then on this side, 2 times 8 is 16. So just make sure you're multiplying and not adding those. And then once we get to here, let's solve by adding the 18 over to this side. And we get 3x is equal to, oh man, what is that? I'm tired today. 16 plus 18 is 34. And then divide by 3. 3 doesn't go into 34 even. Um, chances are you'll probably just want to keep it as a fraction and not as a decimal. <laughs> <laughs> My husband just walked in and burped if you guys heard that. Oh, man. And that would be your answer. So um, that's just kind of an intro to your logarithms. We're going to be doing a lot more equations throughout this unit, so we'll get more practice there. But um, kind of a dif few different types to start you off. So again, kind of your hint is if you are starting with a logarithm, you'll probably want to switch to exponential form to solve it. If you have exponentials set equal to each other, try and get their bases to be the same. That way you can just drop the bases and just look right at those exponents. But I will tell you, sometimes you might run into tricky ones like this. If you have a fraction, just remember you can write that fraction as an exponential with a negative exponent. So that will be kind of your little trick, but you will run into ones like this. So kind of keep an eye out for those. But as always, just let me know if you guys have any questions. And then um, your homework's just on Math Excel. Hope you guys are all doing great. See you later.